All right, as you can see, I am no longer shooting on the Sony a6500 because I am the proud owner of the Sony FX3. Yes, I finally upgraded and it's about goddamn time. If you watched my previous video about the Sony a6500, I talked about the pros and the cons about the camera and you would know that my biggest issue with the camera was the rolling shutter as well as the lack of 10-bit color. I wanted to make this video because I want to help those who own any of the old Sony APS-C cameras, so that is excluding the FX30 because the FX30 was a major upgrade. But if you own any of the A6400, A6500, A6600, the ZV-E10, A6100, you know, like those cameras with the, you know, I want to talk about my thoughts of upgrading to an A7S III, the FX3, and was it worth the upgrade? Okay, so let's talk about the rolling shutter. The rolling shutter on the A6500 sucked. It was jello after jello every step you take. But the FX3 basically solves that. If you want to film very, you know, intense action sequences, if you want to vlog and you don't want to deal with that jello, yeah, the rolling shutter performance is great. Now, the 10 bit color. I've worked with a lot of 10 bit color. Uh, at my job as well as editing videos at home and have I noticed that jump that I kept talking about if you watched the video about the a6500 I showed examples where the 8-bit color was basically falling apart and it couldn't hold together uh, the footage that it was capturing simply due to the 8-bit limitation ever since upgrading to the fx3 and playing around with the footage even right now I'll zoom in somewhere you will see that the image is holding together extremely well and there has been no issues in banding or anywhere where the image is falling apart, it's not there. Don't get me wrong, with the Sony a6500 and the 8-bit color, if you have great lighting and it's exposed well, you'll still get a very nice pleasing image and even though in those cases you will see artifacts in the shadows or whatnot, the, usually YouTube compression would end up covering that anyways. But in a more professional work environment and you're dealing with clients or if you just care about having the best quality, yeah, the FX3 in the 10-bit color uh, is fantastic and it basically solves all of that. The native ISO on the Sony a6500 is ISO 100 versus the FX3, which has a dual native ISO of 640 and 12,800. Now that 12,800 ISO is insane. I know you hear about it in the videos and people talk about it, it's like cheating. You can see in the dark. You can fucking see in the dark with this camera. It's not even funny. I shot a BTS video. We were up at like 5 a.m. It's pitch black and the only lights that were lighting the scenes were like headlights of a car or my Aperture MC that I placed somewhere, right? Or just like small little lights here and there and I am able to get a clean, pretty much properly exposed image at 12,800 ISO. If I were to even try to film that BTS video, on my Sony a6500, there is no way that's gonna happen because I'd be cranking that up to ISO 6400 and that's probably as much as I'd push it and it wouldn't come close to the low light performance of the FX3. The other th amazing thing about this camera is the autofocus. If you recall the video about the Sony a6500, pretty much the majority of that video was autofocus. That's because it, the autofocus kept focusing on my mic that was kind of positioned right here and it was ironic because i was saying how good it was and it was just not in focus but the fx3 uh, ever since using it i found it to be spot on and i can confidently say i can leave it right now uh, in a talking head position and it will focus on my face with no issues oh and the battery life on the fx3 was a 
major improvement over the Sony a6500, okay? The Sony a6500 uses like these, they use the NPF W50 batteries. They suck, okay? Uh, especially the third party batteries, like newer batteries, they're trash. The OEM batteries are better, but they still don't last very long. I'm constantly turning off the camera, turning it on just to preserve battery life. Uh, the FX3, I think we're like reaching a, like three hours of shooting time, which is fantastic. And yeah, I know probably other people will be like, oh, three hours is nothing. Um, yeah, but the jump relative from the Sony a6500 is absolutely fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about some of the negative surprises about the FX3. And the biggest thing that hit me in the face was the price, okay? Now I'm not talking about the body of the camera, like once you swallow that pill of five grand for the camera, the lenses are astronomically expensive. I'm considering getting a wide angled lens, uh, like the 20 mil f1.8 full frame by Sony. That costs $1,100 Canadian. And then the other lens I was considering instead would have been the 16 to 35 uh, power zoom lens f4. And that costs $1,500. It's insane. Relative to Sony APS-C glass, yes, this 16 to 55 f2.8 costs a lot, right? I wouldn't get it. I would probably just stick with primes because they are more affordable. Lenses such as the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, fantastic for the price for $400. It's extremely sharp, wide angled, it's perfect. The Sony 11 millimeter f1.8, also very affordable. Uh, relatively, when I say affordable, you may look at those lenses and be like, that's not expensive. Well, if you compare it to full frame glass, that's cheap, that's expensive. And one other con I guess would be the file sizes. So personally, I haven't really noticed that being a huge problem for me. Uh, I do notice that they are bigger compared to the Sony A6500's file sizes. But I wouldn't say it's like, holy shit, like all my drives are full now out of nowhere because of the new FX3 file sizes. Uh, no, but it's definitely something to consider. Now, this does lead to another thing, which is the playback performance on the computer you're using. Say, for example, the Sony A6500, I don't know if that would play back better than the FX3 because it's an older camera and it probably uses a worse Kodak. I, I don't know. I use an M1 Pro and it just handles everything I throw at it. Uh, and I know probably a lot of you guys don't have an M1 Pro. So just keep that in mind. If you're using a relatively older computer to edit your videos, you might want to look into whether the Sony A65 um, Codex uh, would play back better on your computer versus like uh, FX3. To be honest, if you are considering buying an FX3, I would assume you probably have a decent computer already. Otherwise, maybe consider upgrading the computer before getting the FX3. Yeah, that's probably like the biggest con about going full frame. It's the price. If you can swallow the price or if you save up and you can afford the full frame glass and the full frame body, it is a major improvement in every way. But I wanna segue into this final topic of the video, which is the FX30. As someone who owned the Sony 6500, I had so many APS-C lenses. And you're probably wondering, okay, I own all of these APS-C lenses, what am I gonna do? Because they're not gonna fit on the full frame lenses. So you're thinking, I could save money and get an FX30, or I can spend basically double the price and get an FX3. Is it worth getting an FX3, considering now that there's an FX30? The thing that stopped me from purchasing an FX30 over the FX3 was that the rolling shutter performance, while it has improved over the A6500 or any of the older APC sensors, it is not at the level where I would have been happy with. There's still some jello and there's still some, you know, wiggly lines. The other thing that kind of got to me was in most of the reviews that I saw, the low light performance wasn't much better. 
Uh, yes, it does have a dual base ISO. I think it's, I don't know what the lower one was. I think maybe it's like 800, uh, but I know, I think it goes up to 3200 is the second base ISO. And while that is a huge increase over the Sony A6500's only native ISO, it just didn't seem that much better. Yes, I own all this Sony APS-C glass, but thing is, this is like my job, basically. And I don't want to half-ass my next camera purchase because if you're serious about going into film, I'm not saying you have to have a full frame camera to go into the professional workforce. Like I've done weddings and paid stuff with the Sony a6500. But if you're serious about it and you want to achieve the best image quality possible, and if you want to provide the best image and the best, you know, I'm not gonna get into story, but like just simply the best quality for your clients. Okay, let me clarify what I mean by better image quality. So say for example, you're shooting like a sports commercial and there's a lot of handheld running scenes and you look at the footage afterwards on the FX30 and you realize there is a lot of rolling shutter in the footage. Well, then your shot is ruined. Uh, another example, say you are shooting a mini documentary and you're out in the wild and you don't have that many lights. With the FX30, because it's a APS-C size sensor and the native ISO only goes up to 3200, well, then you're stuck with a underexposed image or you're just gonna have to crank up the ISO to a point where there is so much noise. But if you have an FX3, because the dual native ISO is 12,800, add on the fact that you are using a full frame sensor, you would be able to probably come out with a very clean image and not ruin the quality of the project you're working on. I feel that the improvement of the FX3 over the FX30 is enough for me to want the FX3 over the FX30. I felt that if I purchased the FX30, I wouldn't be content. I think it would just be a matter of time before I start thinking, what if I had the FX3? What if I went full frame? I would have a full frame sensor, which means better low light performance as well as more shallow depth of field. Uh, I would have a dual native ISO of 12,800. I would also have better rolling shutter performance. So like all of these things I felt was a substantial jump from a Sony a6500 to the FX3. But say if I jumped from the Sony a6500 to the FX30, it didn't feel like that much of an improvement. Now, yes, 10 bit and a slight improvement in the rolling shutter performance is a huge improvement on its own. Like just the 10 bit color is huge. But as somebody who is doing film full time and I'm not planning on upgrading my camera for probably another five years, it just, the upgrade from the Sony a6500 to the FX30 just wasn't big enough for me to feel like, yeah, I'm happy with this upgrade. And so I ended up going with the FX3. Let's sum up the video here. Should you upgrade to the FX3 from any of the older Sony APC cameras, excluding the FX30? I think the biggest thing to consider is the price. I would say price is the barrier of entry to full frame cameras. And so if you are not making money from video or filmmaking, it's probably not worth it. Even if filmmaking is like your number one hobby and that's all you do on the side, it's hard to justify the price. And don't get me wrong, the upgrades, right? Like the rolling shutter performance, the 10-bit color, the uh, dual native ISOs and the autofocus and the battery life, uh, the flip out screen, all of this is amazing. And if you're doing full-time filmmaking like myself, yes, it is worth it upgrade but if you're just a hobbyist or you are a youtuber who isn't making a lot of money off of youtube and you know money is kind of like a limiting factor don't get the fx3 get the fx30 yes i know the rolling shutter on the fx30 isn't the greatest it's better but it's just you can't justify the price sony aps-c lenses are cheaper you're still gonna get 10 bit footage out of the fx30 and Overall, the FX30 just makes more 
sense. Yeah, get the FX3 if you are making money or the camera can provide you value in return. But in reality, like the FX30 is probably your best bet. It's, yeah, the, the, the FX30, it's great. It, it, honestly, does that mean don't consider any of the old APS-C cameras? Well, only consider it if you can't afford the FX30. Uh, if you can afford the FX30, get the FX30. It is absolutely worth the upgrade over the older APS-C sensors. But the jump from the FX30 to the FX3, it's harder to justify uh, because of the reasons I had just mentioned. Yeah, if you enjoyed this video, uh, comment down below on what your thoughts are. Are you gonna get an FX3 or an FX30 or are you gonna pick up one of these bad boys? Let me know, uh, like, subscribe, whatever the whole rest of the shit that all YouTubers tell you to do. Yeah, cool. Peace.